I get it. Not everyone is a planner. Personally, I love planning. Sometimes I love planning more than I love doing the plan. <laughs> Whether you love or hate planning though, taking some time to develop your business idea can make a big difference to whether your business succeeds or fails. Today, I'm gonna to help your business succeed by telling you the top two things you need to know about taking your business idea and putting a plan around it, and the one thing to avoid. Welcome to the Fife Movement. I'm your host, Amanda Neely. This is the only movement that helps our generation create our unique feminine and entrepreneurial path to financial independence. Now, once we had the idea for our business, my husband and I, we sat on it for six months or so, but then we had an opportunity. We had some PTO paid time off from our cubicle jobs. So we decided to take a spring break trip and do a business planning retreat. We went to a city known for our type of business. When we arrived, we found a bookstore, we bought a couple books about, about writing business plans, and we spent the mornings writing our business plan, fleshing out our idea. And then we spent the afternoons visiting businesses that were similar to the one we wanted to open in order to gather ideas and get inspired. And the evenings would sometimes be more planning and dreaming, and other times we just had some fun, depending on what we felt like. But we did this for the week, and at the end of that week, we had the first draft of our business plan, and we were so excited. I came to find out later that first draft, um, it was a little too much, had too many pages, too much writing, but it was ours. And it was a second step on our journey that made a world of difference for the path ahead. We had this concrete document, and we could continue to edit and hone it as we continued to learn. Um, it got a lot shorter <laughs> over time. But one example, this first draft also had no numbers attached. We didn't do anything with the financial plan part of our business plan. We still had a ton to learn about how much it would cost to start and run a business and how many customers we would need to make it work and so on and so forth. But as you're planning and preparing to start a business, I highly recommend taking the time to write a plan. The plan will make you do more research. It'll make you solidify your idea in more detail, and it will help you validate your idea as much as possible. Successful people typically have a plan, right? Businesses that you admire likely didn't get there by accident. They planned, they executed the plan, they iterated on the plan, all those things. Now, there are two things that I think are the most important to consider when you're at this stage and one danger that gets people stuck here. The biggest thing I believe you need to have in your business plan is what they call a USP or unique selling proposition. There might be millions of other businesses in your same industry. Make sure your business plan is unique enough to stand out. Let's say your business is in real estate. How do you well, how will you do real estate like no one else can do? You're a unique individual. No other person in real estate is you. So if you put parts of you into your business and you make it different than every other business out there, you're going to stand out and no one can like replicate what you did, right? Because it's you. No one else is you. The second thing I think you need to explore during this stage is if is if you need to start a whole new business at all in order for your idea to uh, come to fruition. You don't need to recreate the wheel if you don't have to. Perhaps you're able to be an entrepreneur or find someone who is already in your arena and ask them if you could work with them to do like an offshoot of what they're already doing. This is something I wish that we would have explored more when we were first starting. You know, ask the questions. What if you were a franchise or subsidiary of another business? Would that make it easier to get your thing going? Or is there another business that could take your idea and implement it, but you get to lead the charge, right? So now for the danger. We've known too many entrepreneurs who get stuck in this stage. Brandon came up with a nickname for them, wantrepreneurs. Notice that we spent one intentional week writing the plan. Then we came back and we started taking action. And that action helped us make the plan better. 
the next episode, I'm going to share the most important action you can take once you have your idea and the plan. It's literally the only reason we made any traction. And it's the reason we didn't get stuck here with just a plan that we kept thinking about and honing in on with ever, without ever actually seeing it come to um, fruition. For now, if you've got a business idea, when are you going to take some time to write the plan? Put a date on the calendar. Maybe you can't go to a different city, but if it's not scheduled, it's not likely to get done. Plan to plan, plan your journey, and the next time we'll talk about journeying the plan. For now, thanks for joining me and connecting with the Fife Movement. As you go about your day, remember, wealth is coming your way, and your quest is to prepare for using it well. For more tips on how to prepare, be sure to subscribe. And to connect with the community, visit fifemovement.com. If my gift has helped you today, please pay the gift forward by sharing this content with a friend. My gratitude in advance. To help this video be seen by more people, please hit the like button. We invite your feedback in the comments as well. And, and specifically, I wanna invite you to share with me what's the biggest part of your plan that seems like the hardest part to write? You know, there's the mission, the vision, the goals, you know, there's all kinds of sections of a business plan. What's the section that you think is the most difficult? Share it in the comments and I'll look forward to talking with you there. Take care.